A microchip society is a lot closer than you think, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. This is from USA Today. You will get chipped eventually. And also, another news article, D.C. is beta testing driver's licenses on cell phones. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. Don't let the boogeyman get you. Obviously, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. And a microchip society is a good idea, right? I mean, we should be microchip like cattle. It's for our own protection. It's for our own safety. And we should have little nanobots in our heads that if we start getting depressed thoughts or don't conform with the Borg society, then these little nanobots should be able to rewrite our brain, right? Because many people think that's the wave of the future and that's the way things should be. So let me share with you some excerpts out of this article. You will get chipped eventually. USA Today, Jefferson Graham, good article. Uh, Los Angeles, you will get chipped. It's just a matter of time. Now, remember earlier, several months ago, last year, a Wisconsin firm, a company out there that deals with microchipping and vending machines, they said, look, we're going to microchip our employees. We're going to do it for free. And then that way, when you go to the vending machine, all you got to do is swipe your hand and you're good to go. You don't even have to pull out your credit card. So they got a lot of hate, especially religious groups, and they also got a lot of praise. And I want to share with you a quote from Noel Chelsea, or Chesley, Noel Chesley. It will happen to everybody, says Noel Chesley, an associate professor of sociology at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, but not this year. And not in 2018, maybe not in my generation, but certainly that of my kids, end quote. So Gene Munster, an investor and also an analysis at the, an analyst (laughs) at Loop Ventures, is an advocate for augmented reality. I went to the website and they're working with all sorts of VR stuff, robotics, brain, machine interface technologies, He thinks embedded chips in human bodies is 50 years away. He says, according to this article, in 10 years, Facebook, Google, Apple, Tesla will not have their employee, will not have their employees chipped. He says, you will see some extreme forward looking tech people adopting it, but not large companies. So he's saying that the big companies aren't going to do it, but maybe some of the smaller ones will. If you look at the, the current situation today, And want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, noblegoldinvestment.com. They're offering some really good price points right now on gold and silver. If you've been looking at the stock market and watching these extreme highs and extreme lows in very short amounts of time, like the other day when it dropped 1,000 points in a day, the stock market is still extremely high, in my opinion, compared to, I mean, just look at the way it was a year ago. Look at the way it was two years ago. It's still high. And if you are considering diversifying, If you have a 401k or an IRA, or if you want to get into gold and silver, precious metals, like a lot of people do when they're looking for a stable platform, especially when the stocks get that volatile. And I remember back in 2008, when the market started to tank and gold and silver, the prices started to go up. So if you're interested, check out Noble Gold Investments. Let them know Rex sent you from Leak Project. Um, Charles Thorngren, he's he's a regular on the show, very intelligent very in tune with the markets. He's been doing this for over 20 years. All right, check them out. Noble Gold Investments. They're even giving free books out to Leak Project listeners on how to use your money wisely and how inflation is used against you. Free books. Click the link. It's in the video description box. So Gene Munster says, yeah, you know, everybody's going to get microchipped, but in the next 10 years, the big companies won't, just more of the extreme companies. So if you look at the current situation today, in 2001, Applied Digital Solutions, which was also called the Digital Angel, installed the Verichip so you could access medical records, tracking, etc. They changed hands. They stopped selling the chip in 2010. Uh, Sweden, biohacks, and I haven't gotten how many, I need to find the numbers on how many people were chipped with the Verichip from 2001 to 2010. In Sweden, there's a company called Biohacks. Almost 3,000 customers have had its chip embedded to do many things, So you could get on the national rail system. You wouldn't even have to show the conductor ticket. In the United States, there's a company called Dangerous Things, a Seattle-based firm that has sold tens of thousands of chips to consumers with its website. And the chip and installation expense is about 200 bucks. So this is USA Today. 
You will get chipped eventually. It's just a matter of time. Then you go to the, um, the website that does this chipping, Three Square Market, and you'll see microchipping and then micro markets. Microchipping, and you see these RFID chips, and then micro markets. So get the chip. Then you don't even have to you know, pull a, a wallet out of your pocket anymore because it's just that easy. Now, with that said, I'm thinking of the 2000 IBM Super Bowl commercial where the guy with the trench coat walks into the store, puts a bunch of stuff in his coat, walks out, doesn't pay for it. You think, and then there's this um, security guard that says, Mr. Such and Such. He turns around, he gives him his receipt, so he did pay for it. You just didn't see him pay for it because he had a chip. The chip took the money. He didn't have to pull it out of his wallet. Now you see companies like Amazon with autonomous stores that don't have anybody working there except for robots and hundreds of cameras and sensors. Smart dust, literally there's smart dust technologies, and I've shared this with you before. They can create cameras the size of a, uh, a speck of sand on the beach that can take pictures. They have smart dust. There's different types of smart dust. Smart dust that can track movements of the surroundings or its host that it's lodged onto. They have smart dust that you can consume that they can track. We're not in Kansas anymore. They have smart dust that can relay sound back to a cloud wirelessly. And this is just a few variants of smart dust, different types of smart dust. Self-replicating DNA computers are now a reality in a laboratory. Genetically modified bacteria cells that can be 3D printed to create living machines is now a reality. They have created human eggs in a human lab in a laboratory, <laughs> human eggs in an alien laboratory with stem cells. They've got carbon nanotubes that can be embedded into your brain mass via liquid form that allow people to interact with artificial limbs and wireless machines. Imagine when you can take that same technology and now you can tap onto uh, your, your car. And have, have your autonomous car drive to pick up your, your friends because you've got to work. Or have it, you know, um, pick, uh, connect to all of your smart appliances, all of your smart machines. It's, now you're surfing the web through this carbon nanotube infusion from your brain. And now everybody's got these carbon infused brains with nanotubes that allow your information to go through these nanotubes and link to different... Um, receptors. You've got these receptors hooked up now to all electronics, all smart appliances, all smartphones, everything digital. And so now you can literally interact with, these, with everything digital via mind because of these carbon nanotubes that have been embedded into your brain because the new New World Order loves you so much. Welcome to the next level, folks. Welcome to the next level. Glasses, contact lenses connected to the web with the carbon nanotubes, a, a watch system that has a holographic interface. You don't even need that now because with these contacts, you're seeing everything in augmented reality. You're surfing the web, you're surfing information, you're looking up what you want like on your computer, and you're interacting with everyday life. But you're, you're, it's, all, it's all linked now. So they love us so much. Thank goodness they love us so much. And what do you think? How far down the road before everybody or virtually everybody in, in um, what people look at as modern civilization, no matter what country, how long before they're microchipped? And will that be the next cell phone? Then let's take it even further. When will they start to use nanotechnologies to incorporate this? Or are they already doing it at some levels? Are there certain people that are being beta tested that are part of experiments with these nanotubes connecting to other mechanisms and then are they creating these living organisms, mach uh, machines? Are they creating living machines now with human DNA, possibly human antibiology, so they can interact their consciousness and, tele uh, and communicate telepathically with these machines? Imagine printing a car infused with your cells that have been cloned, synthetic. You know, you've got your cells cloned, merged with certain bacteria and animal and insect cells that create this really super powerful car that you can print up. And now you can consciously tap into that thing and be the car. You are the car. Hello. You are the airplane. You are the helicopter. You are the machine. You are the house. You print up this, this humongous house that's, you know, let's say it's 16,660 square feet. Do you like that? 
No, it would be it would be more than that. It would be forty two thousand square feet. Forty two. The answer, everything. Forty two. You gotta have twenty. You have to have twenty three in there also. Forty two thousand two hundred and thirty square feet. Three D printed house made up of your cells and a various pantheon of other cells and and powerful stuff that you could genetically modify to be like this living house. And now you are connected to this living house that has this this hovercraft capabilities where it can like, you know, it can fly off into space. You could it's a house but it's also a rocket ship. It's a house rocket ship that can travel time and space similar to Doctor Who's TARDIS. Exactly. That's it. You will build a TARDIS of your DNA merged with other DNAs that will then be an intergalactic time-traveling, dimension-jumping machine. And once you go inside, it's a lot bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Hello, check that out. That's what I'm talking about. Intergalactic space travel with your DNA as a machine that is turned into a TARDIS that is a way beyond a rocket ship. It's way beyond a spaceship. It's all of the above. This is the next level, ladies and gentlemen. Forget the microchips. Let's just print up rocket ships and TARDISes. And then the Daleks, the Daleks, we're going to have to fight up the, we're going to have to fight off the Daleks when they start to show up. Is it Dalek or Darlek? Hold on a second. Stand by. Daleks. Yeah, the, we are the Daleks. You will be destroyed. No, we will fight off the Daleks, the, the AI system that is attempting to overthrow everything organic because we will just print up more organic stuff. Oh, wait. Is it still organic? Well, we'll keep the bad stuff out of there, like glyphosate. We're not going to let any glyphosate in these 3D printed machines that are TARDISes. They will be organic. That's what I'm talking about. Isn't this amazing? And, you know, some people have, have really gotten frustrated I've noticed, been reading through the comments section recently. I did a, a podcast on his Enki Loki, his Loki Enki. And I, I just had to, um, I had to burp there, so I had to hit the mute button just so you guys know. If you're wondering, like, why did you make that weird face and there was no sound there? I'm drinking a carbonated beverage. It is organic, though. Hold on a second. I don't know if you're supposed to see that. It's so good. Have you guys ever had one of these things? Sparkling grapefruit juice. Yeah, it's so good. It's not as good as my kombuchas, but they didn't have any kombuchas. So I'm not in the mood for high fructose corn syrup mixtures with genetically modified E. coli feces like a lot of people enjoy. And that's no joke. But there you have it. I don't even know where I was going because I just had a pattern interrupt. But I really think we're on to something here. Printing up. TARDISes with our DNA so we have a consciousness that can travel time and space and get us there. It's like a consciousness that will house a consciousness. And then since that consciousness can be connected with space and travel time and space because it's been able, it, it can withstand the elements, then you will be experiencing it as well while you're inside of it at the same time. I mean, how amazing is that? How amazing is that? Be the change you want to see. 